and welcome to Hack a Week. This week's project is a special one because it coincides with an article that I have in Make Magazine that came out this last week, July 25th, I think was the release date. Check it out, it's the Fetch O Matic Ball Launcher, and all of the plans are in there. And this video is for the people who maybe came here from the magazine that wanted to have a little help, maybe a little better explanation of how everything inside here works. It's not that complicated and if I show you the insides and a few quickie little uh, build points that are a little tricky, you'll probably understand the whole build process a lot better, have a lot more fun, and that was my intent in writing the article in the first place. So, get your dog ready, all your materials and your tools, and let's get to work and make the fetch o -matic. Here we have one disassembled ball launcher, so let's take a look at what we've got. There's the hole uh, cut in the bottom with the three holes drilled for the mounting points of the motor. Here is the wiper motor, and I've cut the bosses down for that a little bit so that it'll fit flush. You can see there's like a flush mounting point there. I had to tap out these to a uh, quarter twenty. That's one fourth inch by twenty threads per inch bolt size. This motor had a shaft with a flat along one side of it, and you can see where I've cranked down the set screw. Very important that set screw because uh, everything depends on that. The whole ball launcher, all of its uh, potential energy it stores up, all gets transferred right down to that one point. We'll go over that a little later. I made a little shim for this shaft to take up a little bit of the space that was left over because this was actually specked out like in a metric size and the pulley I got is one half inch. So that helps a bit with that. So let's get to mounting the uh, motor. Okay, here's the holes where the motor is going to mount. It's going to sit just like this. And we're going to put some washers on both sides. I have a, a nut and bolt assembly with a washer, flat washer. I'll put on this side. I'll also put one on this side. And uh, these holes in the wood, they should just stay in by themselves, which is very convenient. So. As you can see, there's very little threads poking through there, just a tiny bit. Then we'll get the motor up here and get one of these bolts started. Oops, wait a minute. I'm doing this wrong. This way. There we go. Once we've got them all started, we'll flip everything over and work from the inside. And you can use a socket or a 7 16 box and a wrench. There's just a few threads going into that motor. That's all you really need. And then I'm going to tighten this down to where it just feels really good and snug. And I just barely see the washer start to distort a little bit. And I know I got it good and tight. Okay. Now next we're going to put the pulley on. The pulley has a set screw right here and that is what's going to hold the pulley to the shaft so that's the side that goes down and ahead of time you can rotate this around by connecting power up and just flipping the switch along until you get the flat on this shaft that you filed a little bit ahead of time once you get that uh, that flat on there let me zoom in a little here all right, the motor's mounted, we're ready to put the pulley on. We're gonna make sure that the flat that we filed on, on the shaft, is pointing that way. Here's the pulley. The pulley's got uh, a set screw right there. So we're gonna mount that so that the set screw lines up with the flat spot, like so. Okay. Now, we will take the uh, 530 seconds ball and allen we have and we're going to work from the back side of this thing and uh, we're going to snug that up just a little bit just by hand just reach right down in like that at an angle and just tighten it up until it just barely still moves the reason we do that is because we're going to put this spacer in. This is that spacer that's listed in the parts. So that goes in now. And uh, on mine, I had a little bit of a spot where the set screw tended to 
bump into the spacer, so I filed that a little bit flat. You can see there, I'll give you a close up. Let's put that in. This fits a little bit tight because it's already been in there once and uh, got a little distorted by the mounting of the set screw. Now I'm going to stack three big flat washers on to that shaft. Now I'm going to drop the uh, launch bar on there, the whacker. Two more flat washers, and that leaves me just a little bit of space, which is okay. That's what I want. Between the top of that spacer and those washers, I want a tiny bit of space. Then I'm going to put this bolt that's going to hold everything together. This one is metric. This is six millimeters by one thread per inch, because that's the threads that came in the motor. Now, if you have a motor with a different threads, of course, you would use a different bolt. That has a uh, 10 millimeter hex head on it. I want to get this uh, good and snug. Not too tight, like you're going to break something, but good and snug. Now you can see there's a little bit of play left in that pulley. We need to get rid of that. Now the way we're going to do that is with the 5 16 oh, I'm sorry, 5 seconds ball end Allen. Put that in the back here, just like we did by hand before, but now we've got a ratchet on it where we can really tighten it up. Now I'm going to be on the other side wiggling it back and forth to make sure it's really centered on that flat spot while I tighten it up. Ugh, I just broke the Allen wrench. Well, that's really tight. <laughs> That Allen wrench has been through a lot. I'm going to have to get that ball out of there. But that's how tight you want that. If you have just a, a regular uh, right angle Allen, you can use that also. And you can just get on the end of it with a, uh, a crescent wrench uh, like this to get a little extra leverage on it. You can do something like that with it. So anyway, get that good and tight, which it is now. I have no worries that that's tight enough because... I broke the tool. Hey, that happens, you know. That's a really tiny area that I was putting a lot of torque on, but that's a Sears uh, Craftsman. No, well, anyway, maybe not. So, back to the project. We've got that all mounted up now. There's the pulley. We're ready to uh, give it a little test spin. I'm going to go ahead and hook it up to power. Positive, negative. Let's flick the switch on. And just real quick, bump the switch and it turns. It's all good. I gotta get my fingers out of the way because the lever comes back around. So there we are. The arm's mounted. This is tight. The pulley's on. The set screw is really tight. We're ready to keep going here. Okay, there's a couple details I'd like to go over. One of them being the switch mount. There's the recess part you uh, read about in the article on MakeZine. And uh, it's just about three quarters of the way through the wood. Just enough to leave some room for the switch to mount and recess it out of the way a little bit. That's the reason you do that. So now we go to the ball chute and that's tapered the way it is so that the ball will fall in and end up right on the switch. And then of course when the top is on that, uh, that's what keeps the ball from coming all the way back because it doesn't leave much room for the ball to go up and over this little backstop right here. So the height of these sides is pretty critical. You need to stick to the plan on that. There's another critical point too, and it's right here on this bolt. That bolt needs to be just about that high. The reason for that is because there's a spring that mounts to it, and that spring needs to clear this bolt right here in the center, and it's going to be tensioned from above. So give that bolt a, a pretty fair amount of clearance. The distance between that nut and the top of the bolt should probably be about 5 sixteenths of an inch. Alright, a little close up of that micro switch mount. You can see how the uh, switch is mounted to that piece of wood. It's uh, pretty much right on the edge of the piece of wood, the two screws that go through. And then that piece of wood is just mounted here. No glue on any of this, that way you have the uh, option to move it later. The screw that holds it in place is right there. And uh, so there's the wiring you can see right there. Um, the one that's uh, marked NO goes to the normally open switch that runs back here, goes to the first pin on the motor. The other one 
which is the positive lead coming from the battery, obviously runs back here, goes through the switch and to the battery. And then the ground lead, which runs to the second terminal on the motor, goes right out the back and to the battery. Positive and negative. Positive red, negative black. Now for the top installation, that spring needs to go between this bolt right here, which is also spaced about a quarter of an inch away from the nut. The spring goes around that, like so, okay, and then it also has to go around the bolt that's on the lever here. So what I do when I put this together is I just let it hang off from that top screw. I raise it up, I peek in just like you see right now, connect it onto that bolt, okay. I keep some tension on it, I lower it down, and then we're going to go back to the top side and I'll show you what I do next. Okay, here we are on the top. I've got my uh, wood screws right here that I'm going to put into the top to hold it down. So the spring tension is still on there, it's still connected. I tilt it like this, and what I'm going to do is push it forward until I get a hole to line up. And uh, I've had this assembled before, so it's not a bad idea to put the whole box together, get the holes already there, all pre-drilled, ready for the screws. Put the screw in where the hole lines up, and then uh, run it in with a screwdriver or a cordless drill if you have one. I'm going to use my cordless drill because it's quicker. That's it. So we have one screw holding. You could probably launch stuff out of here all day long with just one screw holding the whole works together. It's not that big of a deal, but we're going to go ahead and put all the screws in. I went a little overkill on some of the screws um, as far as the number. You could probably back off from that a little bit if uh, you were so inclined. And so there it is together, uh, ready to launch. Oh yes, one more thing, this front leg assembly. This is pretty easy stuff, really. It's just a, a closet dowel that I drilled holes in. I put a couple of electrical conduit brackets here on the front, and then I just take a bolt and I stick it in a hole here on the front, and it hits one of the things, and there we go. I have a, an angle and a, a launch trajectory. And so that's, uh, that's about it. It's... Um, Kind of open for a few little uh, tweaks here and there if someone wants to do some modifications of their own. And I've often thought it would be pretty cool to make a stack here on the top where you could just have a row of them and they would fall in and you'd be able to do a rapid fire <laughs> ball launcher thing. That might be kind of fun. So, uh, well, let's, uh, let's be real brave here and go ahead and do a test fire right here on the bench. You ready? Let's lower this a little bit though, I think. We're aiming just a little bit high. I'd say right about there looks pretty good. Here we go. I have this set up now with a piece of plexiglass here, just a single piece of wood holding the bolt that uh, holds the spring in place right there. That way I can show you what goes on underneath the hood uh, while it launches a ball. So let's take a look. Okay, I want to take a moment to mention you should never ever reach in like this to try to do anything where you could trigger that because if it comes around and hits a finger, it would really, really hurt. I had it happen once when I was building the first version of this thing and believe me, you don't want that to happen. You could potentially break a, a bone if it hits straight on possibly and if you didn't, it would really, really hurt. So don't ever reach inside this thing if the ball gets stuck. Turn the thing off. If you have to take the top off to unjam it or something, do that. Uh, so here it is, ready to go. You'll be able to see the arm come around like this, go past the point of center here where it can just free rotate and hit the ball. Switch on, we're armed, here we go. It happens pretty quick, so watch again. And you can see how this just comes around on its own momentum once this switch is open after the ball launches and it parks right there every time. Well, that's it. The thing that takes the most stress is the uh, pulley, the tension on the pulley and that Allen that's right there, that Allen set screw. 
It's a good idea every time you run this thing, you go out play with the dog for a while, come back in and tighten that set screw again. Just wiggle that around. Make a mark where the, uh, the thing lines up. Like I did to mine, I put a little thing called A for Allen wrench. Um, <laughs> Allen screw. It's right there, and as it turns out, right now it's parked in the perfect spot. But Make a little mark there so that you can easily access this, park it to that point when you're done playing with it, and give it a tighten up every time you, uh, every time you play with it. So I hope you have lots of fun with this thing. Let's, uh, let's take it outside now in its fully assembled version, and we'll do a little playtime with Sophie. Sophie, are you ready? Sophie's ready. Hope you're ready. Here we are outside. We're going to show you the ball launcher in action. We've got it connected to an 18 volt Makita battery. And uh, flick it on there. Ready, Sophie? Come on. Here we go. <laughs> Sophie's a fetcher deluxe. She just loves to fetch. Come on. We just got to get her to put it back in the hopper. Come on. Drop. 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 Nope, up here. Come on. Come on. She's almost got it. Hey, let go. What I like about this angle is if the dog is standing out here in front, generally it's just going to go right over their head. If it does hit him in the nose, it's not a big deal. I've seen them hurt each other worse scrapping and playing in the yard. It's not that hard of a hit. Good girl. Drop it. Come on. Come here. Come on. Drop. Drop. Sophie. Drop. Drop it. Drop it. Drop. Good girl. She likes to hang on to everything she fetches and wants you to try to grab it and then she plays chase me. I'm having a bit of a hard time breaking her of that, but she's getting there. We'll get her to drop it in the hopper sooner or later. This thing really wasn't intended to take the place of, you know, the dog owner throwing the ball and having fun with the dog. That, that could potentially happen. I'm sure people out there will train their dogs to do that. But it's still fun to play with your dog with this because you don't have to throw that dang ball. <laughs> you can save your arm. Come on, Sophie. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Drop. Drop it. Drop it right in here. Drop. Drop it on a hopper. Come on. Come on. Wanna go for one more? One more time? Sophie. Come on, Sophie. Come here. <laughs> Come on. When she does that, that's her way of letting me know she's had enough. Well, I hope this video helped you out with a better understanding of the assembly of the Fetchomatic ball launcher. I sure had a lot of fun putting this together, writing the article, and a big thanks, by the way, to all the people at Make Magazine for helping me out with that and for the opportunity to submit an article and get it out there to all the makers that love to do stuff just like this. So, if you build one of these, shoot a video of it and let me know. Just send it to me in my inbox at Hack a Week uh, TV here on YouTube. Anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, keep on hacking.